Reinforcing steel, also known as rebar, is used in almost every structure and bridge in the USA. It is placed in concrete to provide the additional strength that is needed to carry loads. While over 30% of the total amount of reinforcing steel used is in bridges and roads, it is also utilized in a wide variety of building construction, such as offices, healthcare facilities, single and multi-family dwellings, and schools. These structures are commonly built of steel reinforced concrete to provide strength, security, and durability. There's a lot of benefits in reinforcing steel, especially when it's partnered with its natural material, concrete. Concrete is very strong when you compress it, but while you try to pull it apart, it's very weak. What we do is we take the reinforcing steel, we put it in the concrete structure at the locations where the concrete is trying to pull itself apart, and that makes it extremely strong. You really never see the reinforcing steel unless you're on a construction site. It's sort of like our skeletal system. It holds everything together and it, you wind up with a very strong, resilient structure. Architects really like to specify reinforced concrete because it brings out their imagination and it actually can be done as opposed to other materials where it's not so easy to do. That's one of the really inherent qualities of reinforced concrete. You can form it, shape it any way you desire. There's a lot of natural resiliency built into reinforced concrete. If you look at and the wildfires that have occurred lately. You look at all the devastation that happened, and the only structures that were left were those which were made of reinforced concrete. So it has a natural ability to resist fire. Also very resilient with respect to wind and tornadoes. Same with earthquakes. Overall, there's a natural redundancy to a reinforced concrete structure that makes it very sound and stable under any natural disaster condition. As natural disasters such as hurricanes, tornadoes, and wildfires are becoming more intense and destructive, resiliency has quickly become a pressing topic of discussion. Furthermore, a majority of America's roads and bridges have reached the end of their initial design life. The U.S. spends far more each year repairing existing roads and bridges than building new ones, according to the Federal Highway Administration. It is estimated that between 2016 and 2025, each American household will lose $3,400 every year due to infrastructure deficiencies. The use of steel-reinforced concrete solves both of these issues with economical solutions. Steel-reinforced concrete bridges and buildings offer an inherent resilience and safety, as well as economics and durability for construction. Recent advancements in construction have made it more economical to use reinforced concrete, which allows us to go higher and higher into the building. Being able to get that concrete up to higher heights allows us to be more efficient and economical in the placement of the concrete, allowing us to use the land that is becoming more scarce in urban areas. Founded in 1924, the Concrete Reinforcing Steel Institute is one of the oldest trade associations in America. Its corporate members include rebar producers, or steel mills, fabricators, placers, manufacturers of bar supports, splices and construction accessories. Professional members include architects, engineers, and contractors. One of the initial responsibilities of CRSI was to actually track and tag and make sure all of the reinforcing steel got to the job site and put in the proper location. Now, in the building code arena, CRSI does a number of things. For example, we'll introduce new materials into the building code, new structural systems that are innovative, Another way that CRSI is active is to lobby government officials to advocate for resilient construction, funding for infrastructure, as well as training for a skilled workforce. One of the ways that we advocate is to push our government officials to fund infrastructure. We're pushing for resilient construction so that when we're replacing those structures, we're not having to repair them as often. If the materials that we're choosing up front are more durable, then we're going to have a more durable and resilient structure. The CRSI Education and Research Foundation has long been an advocate for education in the reinforced concrete industry. With their current shortage of skilled labor in America, they are adding support for technical and trade schools, as well as universities. In addition to the institute itself, we do have a CRSI Education and Research Foundation. The primary goal there is to fund research and scholarships for education within the reinforced concrete industry. Each year we fund approximately five or six projects, depending on the size of those projects, and we fund undergraduate scholarships each year. One of the new services we provide, which we're really excited about, is a capstone course that we developed for undergraduate and graduate students. There are many viable profession opportunities within the reinforced concrete industry, anywhere from 
rebar fabrication to detailing, estimating, and placing. It's a long, hard day's work, but it's a satisfying one at the end of the day. One of the things that I really enjoy about working with CRSI is not only the members, but our staff. We work together well as a team. We have a clear understanding of what the needs are for the industry in general, and we produce things that are fun and exciting for everybody to use. To learn more about CRSI and to make use of their industry-leading technical resources, visit crsi.org.